Standard 9 Geography Chapter 1 Concept of Region Points to Learn Concept of Region 1. Factors for Identifying Region Learning Outcomes After learning this chapter, you will come across the following information. 1. What is Region? 2. What is a natural factor? 3. What is an economic factor? 4. How is a region identified? 5. Location and extent of Maharashtra. 6. Maps providing regional information. Concept of region So far in different classes, we have studied various regions. Right from the district to the continent, we did consider regions of varying aerial extents. However, we did not take into account the questions like, what is a region? How does it come into existence? Or, how is it perceived? On what basis the regions are defined? In this class, we are going to do precisely the same. For that, we shall first try to understand the concept of region. Answer to the question, what is region, can be given in simple words as follows. It is a small portion of a vast area. Of course, this answer is not the definition of a region. There is neither any limit on how vast an area should be, nor there is any limit on how small the part can be. At times, we find certain portion of an area stands out as a distinct part from the rest of the area. This distinctiveness of the portion may be due to its affluence or due to some issue, but we realize that it is different from the rest. Different parts of a vast area are studied with respect to their characteristics and we identify certain parts to be having some common characteristics. Such parts having common characteristics are then called regions. These characteristics can be physical, cultural, social, economic, etc. If we find that some portion of an area has greater relief, then we may call such an area as mountainous or hilly region. If in some parts we find dense growth of trees, we may call it as forest region. Heavy greater relief on densely growing trees becomes the common factor of that portion of the area. Such units stand out distinctively and hence we identify them as region. In fact, regions get identified due to the common characteristics. Mountainous region or forest region are the regions based on the physical characteristics. Though it is not necessary that all the regions are based on physical characteristics. The regions based on socio-economic and cultural aspect are largely influenced by a variety of factors such as the people residing in the area, the manner in which they have adjusted to the physical conditions, the way they utilize natural resources, etc. Besides these, for the ease of administration, Areas are divided into suitable regions. Such regions are called administrative regions. When an area is taken into consideration as a region, following things are expected to be present with reference to that region. 1. At least one or more characteristic has to be common. 2nd. Regional contiguity. 3rd. Common Regional Personality Fourth, Similarity 1. Concept of Region In this class, we are going to study the regional geography of Maharashtra. While doing so, we shall be discussing physical, economic, social and cultural aspects and try to understand the conditions as they exist in different parts of the state. However, 
Before doing so, it is necessary to get information about Maharashtra with reference to its location, extent as well as the administrative divisions of the state. Maharashtra Location and Extent Maharashtra state came into existence on 1st May 1960. Maharashtra is known to be a progressive state of our nation. The state of Gujarat lies to the northwest of Maharashtra. In the north is Madhya Pradesh and to the east is the state of Chhattisgarh. Goa, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh are located to the south of the state. The east-west and north-south maximum stretches of the state are approximately 860 and 730 kilometers respectively. The state is located along the western coast of the peninsular India. Its geographical area is 3.08 lakh square kilometers. The state is gifted with a coastline of 720 kilometers. There are 35 districts of varying aerial extent in the state of Maharashtra. Of these, Ahmednagar is the largest and Mumbai city district is the smallest in terms of aerial extents. For administrative purpose, the districts are divided into smaller units and these are called talukas. There are 355 talukas in Maharashtra. As per 2011 census, the population of the state is 11 crores 23 lakhs 72,972. This population is distributed in approximately 41,000 villages and 378 urban centers. For the administration, 35 districts are placed into 6 divisions. These are Konkan, Pune, Nasik, Aurangabad, Amravati and Nagpur. Factors for identifying regions Regions are identified on the basis of one or multiple factors physical, economic, social, cultural, etc. are the groups of geographical factors. On the basis of these factors, regions can be identified considering a single factor on their combinations. There are many factors in each of the group mentioned above. Maharashtra state has a vast aerial extent. Moreover, there is a considerable diversity in the physical setting of different parts in the state. The physical setting influences a number of factors. Hence, from Sindhuturk to Garchiroli or from Nandurbar to Nanded, we find distinctions in the different parts of the state. Let us see how different regions can be identified on the basis of physical, economic and social factors. Thus, you may have realized how the regions can be identified on the basis of information on various factors. The process of identification of regions is called regionalization. So far, we have seen the regions that are identified on the basis of single factor. However, identification of region is quite a complex process. At times, we have to take into account large number of factors for regionalization. The identification of regions is an essential and basic exercise of planning process. This helps the planner to plan the developmental strategies. Regions on the basis of economic factors We can now proceed to see how the regions are identified on the basis of economic factors. 
In this case also, we shall take a single factor into consideration for identifying the regions, agriculture, industry, trade and similar factors are included in this group of economic factors. We shall consider data on agriculture and industries for identifying regions. Let us start with the crop regions. Crop regions are identified on the basis of concentration of a given crop. You will find certain crops thrive well in certain areas. This is because the area has favorable condition of the given crop. See map shown in figure 1.5. This map is drawn on the basis of area under cotton crop from different districts. Dot method is used for drawing this crop. Each dot represents 1000 hectares of area under the crop. You will find that in most of the high rainfall and very high rainfall area, there are hardly any dots. Even in the low rainfall region, the dots are far and few. Most of the cotton area is concentrated in the medium rainfall zone. There is a high concentration of dots in the north central part of the state. Starting from Dure district, a continuous belt of cotton area extends eastward up to the Vardha district. The belt further continues towards south to cover most of the eastern districts of Aurangabad division up to Nanded district. Regions based on physical setting. See the map of Maharashtra depicting the physiography and drainage given in the figure 1.3. The map is drawn on the basis of elevation data using hill shade method. The height is shown by different color tints from green to dark brown. Physiographic regions of an area are identified on the basis of factors like height, relief, slope, rock type, etc. The Konkan along the west coast stands out as distinct physiographic region due to its westward slope, low height and easily identifiable boundaries in the form of the coastline in the west and the western ghat escarpment in the east. Next physiographic region that you can easily identify is of course the western ghat region. Its greater height and greater relief make it stand out distinctly. Both the Konkan and the Ghats are north-south extending regions. Further east from the western Ghats, you can see that the area is having relatively lower relief, but direction of slope is not same all over. We shall have to take help of slope direction to identify physiographic region of the area to the east of the Ghats. By and large this area is called Plateau region. We can identify three distinct regions on the basis of direction of the slope. Number one, the area occupied by Tapi Basin in the North Maharashtra has westward slope. Number two, similarly, the area occupied by Vardha Vain Ganga, option Vardha Vai Ganga, basins slopes in north-south direction. Number three, rest of the plateau area is having eastward slope. One way, within Tapi Basin, identify a separate region with high relief at Satpuda region. On the map, you will see it along the northern boundary of the state. The area to the south of Ajanta range and east of the Ghats may further be separated on the basis of major river basins of Godavari, Bhima and Krishna. For identifying the physiographic regions, we have mainly used three factors like height, 
relief and direction of slope. It is not always necessary to use multiple factors. Even on the basis of a single factor, regions may be identified according to the purpose. Let us see an example of this by studying rainfall regions. Figure 1.4 shows the map of rainfall distribution in Maharashtra. It is drawn on the basis of rainfall data collected from different stations. The map is drawn using isopleth method. The rainfall amount is represented on the map with the help of isoheights. Option with the help of isoheights. These are the lines joining places of equal rainfall. The area between certain isolines are colored with different shades of blue. Conventionally, blue color is always used to represent water. In the map, you will find four regions having very high, high, medium and low rainfall. Areas having rainfall more than 3000 mm are appearing as isolated patches in the Western Ghat region. These form the region of very high rainfall. The area between 1000 mm and 3000 mm is called as region of high rainfall. This region is spread in two different parts of the state. In the west, most of the Konkan area and the Ghat area falls in this category. In the east, most of the portion of Varda Wai Ganga Basin forms the part of this category of high rainfall. The medium rainfall region is defined by 700 mm and 1000 mm isoheights. The region of low rainfall is defined by isoheight of 700 mm. All the area where the rainfall is less than 700 mm falls in this category. If you observe closely, you will find the region of low rainfall is roughly parallel to the ghats and extends in north-south direction. It is because the low rainfall zone in the state is actually the rainfall shadow area of the ghats. We may take up the case of industries. In figure 1.6, a map showing number of factories per lakh population in each district is shown. The map is drawn using Coropleth method. It shows the concentration of factories in different districts. These are not the factories of any particular industry, but they represent all the factories in the district from different industries. You will see that there is a concentration of factories in Mumbai, city and suburban, Thane and Solapur districts have 46 to 62 factories per lakh population. It is followed by Raigad and Pune districts where there are 40 to 45 factories per lakh population. These are the regions of greater concentration of industries. The districts like Nandurbar, Garchiroli, Bir, Osmanabad and Latur have less than 7 factories per lakh population. Such maps showing concentration of economic activities help in the regional planning processes. Boundaries of Regions Boundaries of the land areas possessed by an individual or nations are in the form of thin boundary lines. These are precisely demarcated on map as well as on the ground. These boundaries and boundaries of geographical regions differ considerably. Changes in most of the geographical factors take place in gradual manner in the form of transition. As a result, boundaries of geographical regions are also in the form of transitional zones. Only the political and administrative regions have well-demarcated boundaries. 
even if the boundaries of geographical regions are determined on the basis of quantitative information, these remain in the form of transitional zones on ground. For example, climatic regions. For these, temperature and rainfall data are used to draw the boundary on the map. However, the climate does not change abruptly on the line of the boundary. It changes gradually over a region. For most of the geographical regions, boundaries are drawn only on maps, never on the ground. Of the geographical regions where precise boundaries can be thought of are the river basins. This is because they are defined on the basis of lines of water divide.